My guest today grabbed my attention early on in his bio as he specializes in helping people make money without working too hard and without spending a lot of money. Well, who wouldn't want that? My guest also has the intriguing offer of bringing us some magic sauce into our businesses. So let's not waste time in knowing how to get richer and say welcome, Richard Fletcher. Welcome. Thanks for having me here. Lovely to talk to you, Richard. Richard, I love this offer of yours of helping my viewers and listeners make more money without spending lots of money. What's it all about? <laughs> well, um, I may disappoint some of them by saying it's not some magic thing where you can um, you can sit on a sofa with no skills and nothing to offer and just have money pour into your bank account. I know some people claim you can do that, but you can't. Sorry to break it to you. Uh, but really, it's about people who... Um, a lot of the people I work with are coaches, consultants. So they might be life coaches, fitness coaches. They might, you know, some of them even sex coaches and a relationship coaches. Loads of different weird and wonderful stuff. But the key thing is that they help improve people's lives in some way, albeit in some cases a small way, but they help make people's lives better by coaching them to get a better result. So I show them how they can increase their prices and get more clients. Uh, my specific way of doing it is by... Uh, posting on my Facebook personal feed. Uh, we call that organic marketing. But uh, there's multiple ways of doing it. And really, all of this stems from the initial offer, the initial, how do you separate yourself from everybody else who's doing the same thing as you? How do you get people who've got a problem to realize they've got a problem and then think, I need to do something about it, and then think, I need to go to you and not one of these 10 billion other people? That's really kind of what I'm all about. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. I always remember the opposite to that was the old days when lawyers couldn't market and they just expected people to walk through your door. And now they're having to really start to market themselves and tell everybody what makes them different. So, yeah. What, yeah. yeah. So, Richard, what is the magic sauce and can it work for anyone? And where did you get the idea for the title from? <laughs> well, um, I'll answer your last question first. The idea for the title was literally. I'd been in a lot of different people's Facebook groups talking about marketing. I was a dating coach for a while. Uh, I was in other people's Facebook groups talking about marketing. And very often, it sounds kind of big headed, but very often I found myself that someone asked a question, I'll give the best answer. Uh, people are like, oh yeah, this is really good, Richard. Um, but sometimes I give an answer that would disagree with the owner of the group. And then I end up getting kicked out, you know, because right. people don't like the people don't like that. And I was like, why don't I just start my own group? And then nobody can kick me out of that apart from, apart from maybe Zuckerberg. Um, uh, so I did. And I had no real plans for it. Uh, that was in June 2018. Uh, actually, that's how my business coaching career started, completely by accident. Uh, six weeks later, the group had grown to over 1,000 people, and it became clear that they needed a course. They needed something more than me just making posts for free and commenting on stuff. Uh, but over time, I was like, well, what should I call it? And I thought, well, the big thing that I'm advising people on is not following cookie cutter, to use an American expression, um, mm, yeah. rules and, you know, following scripts. And this is how you're supposed to do it. And people follow these rules and have no idea why they're following the rules, but a guru told them to do it. So they carry on doing it. Um, but thinking about, well, what makes me different from everybody else? Like, you know, if I'm, let's say someone who is even someone simple, something simple, like a, a physio or um, a singing teacher or something like that. What makes me different from every other singing teacher? So I'm no longer a commodity where, uh, you know, I live in the northwest of England in a town called Preston. Uh, if I want a singing teacher, I go on Google singing teacher Preston and a bunch of them come up, like often on the Google map. Is my only criteria to look on the map and go, okay, who's closest to me and who's cheapest? That's normally how people do it. How can people pull themselves out of that and go, okay, this person's charging twice as much as everyone else, but I want to go to them because they offer a result or they, they offer something that all these other ones don't. That's really what the magic source is all about, pulling yourself away from being a commodity into something unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree too. If you allow yourself to be commoditized, then you get into the price spiral, don't you? You know, stand out. Well, exactly, so yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you've talked in the past about how online business owners can stand out in what it is an overcrowded online world. So let's just go back and give a few sort of bullet points. What are the essential skills that those owners need to gain and use? Yeah. <laughs> um... 
you have to understand, in my opinion, unless you have a team of people you've paid to do this for you, which is unlikely if you're a one person working for yourself, you know, like I said, a singing teacher before or a life coach, you've probably not got a team of marketers doing this for you. You have to understand how to first know, well, what is it that I do that's different to everybody else? Like, why am I credible? Why should somebody come to me and pay me rather than any of the 10 people on the same road who do the same thing as me? That's the first thing you have to understand. Then you have to understand how to communicate it with your audience. So I always say that there isn't one single right way to do business, Malcolm. So I'm not, mm. I'm, I'm not an evangelist for Facebook and saying that everyone needs to make Facebook posts and do it that way. I just like Facebook because Facebook for me rewards good writing. Whereas in something like Instagram is more about images and I can't be bothered spending all day like posing like this, like, you know, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, spending three hours editing a picture. So I look 26 or whatever, <laughs> or well, whatever else is expected of Instagram. I just, I just like writing and typing and Facebook rewards are, but it's about finding, you know, find a platform that works for you. It might be ads. It might be whatever. Um, it's about that found, getting that foundation right first, understanding how to communicate yourself. So someone who's going about their day through life, they may not even realize they have a problem until your words come in front of them and they realize, go, oh, okay, that's interesting. Then the, then the wheels start turning and then they start looking at more of your stuff. Then they go, ah, they see some credibility from you. They see that you've helped people just like them. And then they start thinking, well, I wasn't thinking about spending any money today, but maybe I'll go to Malcolm and give him a lot of money because he could help me. That's really the kind of the journey we want people to go through. Mm, yeah, they could send us the money, Richard, but I wouldn't be able to spend it. We're in lockdown. The pubs are closed. I like your premise of raising prices. Do you think that it's achievable in the current price-sensitive climate? Are we all just a bit too timid with our pricing? Um, I think maybe not all of us, but in general, yes. I think um, in general, people, what people do is they look at, okay, what is the price range for whatever it is I sell? And then they'll go, well, I can't charge top of the line because they're the top people and I'm not one of the top people, you know, I'm not this or that. I'm not this kind of, you know, the, the usual doubts and nonsense and, you know, head trash that people get. Of, I'm not this kind of person. Oh, this person's been, this person, you know, this singing teacher's done X Factor stars. I only help people in my local area. So if he charges 50 quid an hour, maybe I could charge 30. That's how they do their pricing yeah, normally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, instead of looking at it that way, you go, well, what is the value I provide? Can I, if this guy gets, if this guy charges 50 quid an hour, well, it takes, how long does it take him to get a result for someone? Or maybe he gets great results for people who are, you know, stars already and makes them better. But with absolute beginners, uh, people who don't know whether the next note is up or down, he can't help them at all. But I'm really good with beginners and I can take people to a level where they might not be, you know, a famous singing star, but they could go on stage and hold a tune. They could play a guitar and sing along within three months. Now you've got to the beginnings of an offer that separates you from AN or the singing teacher. So a key thing about it is to look and go, well, what is the result I've got? Can I, can I put something that's maybe time bound where I say, okay, three months from now, you know, you know, you might not be able to sing a note today, or you might be passable, but not great. Three months from now, if you follow my system, my program, you're going to be in a position where you can take your guitar down the pub, go to the open mic night and sing along. And everyone's going to be like, wow, that's really good. Instead of what they used to say with me when I used to go to open mic nights, like my best mate used to come along and used to go, um, you're always the best guitar player and the worst singer, which is like, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, but I didn't like it too much. <laughs> I was like, I would have loved someone to be able to take me through a program like where three months from now, I could maybe, if not be the best singer, I could be, you know, up there and decent. That's what I wanted. But everybody was just generic singing teacher. And who do I choose? I had no idea who to pick. So I picked someone local. That's literally how I went through it. Um, I don't know if I answered your question there, Malcolm. I kind of yeah, went yeah, off no, on no, a tangent. Great. I, I, I just want to uh, tell you a quick story, something not far from you. Um, in Blackpool, I was oh, training 40-odd yeah. landladies for the University of Lancaster. And we were talking about pricing. And the, <laughs> true story, they would watch who put what price somebody put up in the window and then knock a pound off. And then one day <laughs> they were down to eight pound bed and breakfast. And I'm saying to you, <laughs> I was stupid as that, you know, you've got an ensuite room and oh, but they, they're eight pounds. And, and by the way, there'll be seven tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's like, at what point, what point do you stop when, when you're giving your customers money to turn yeah, up? Yeah, it was like lemons running off the pier at Blackpool. You know? 
<laughs> so, that's that's kind of that's, that's not that's pretty much what I was saying before with the pricing yeah. thing of just um, like we want to get away from this where your only differentiating factor is the price. Like yeah, bed and I and I see that I went I went to Blackpool a couple of months ago, um, and you walk that you walk down a lot of these streets. It's just bed and breakfast, bed and breakfast, bed and breakfast, bed and breakfast, and this. I have no way to tell whether one's better than the other. I don't know if I walk inside one and it's like a grotty room with, you know, miscellaneous stains all over the wall and yeah. it stinks or whether it's actually really nice. I yeah. have no way of knowing. And it's literally, you know, all I can go on is price. And it's like, if these places could differentiate themselves and make them seem like, Hey, we're an affordable B and B, but actually it's really comfortable, nice and clean. You get, a really, you know, hearty breakfast here, a, a warm welcome, um, little things like that. If I could think that, I mean, think, well, well, I wouldn't book it because I live down the road, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if yeah, I was I, staying I, there, I, I might consider mean, it. But yeah. you no, know, none of these places, none of these places. I look at them and go, well, why would I pick you? There's like a billion. There seems to be a billion bed and breakfast yeah. in Blackpool. Why would I pick you? Yeah, there's so many easy ways to stand out in that. No, mm. we all love success stories, and you've got some great ones. So tell me about the wedding photographer who you helped up prices from £1,500 to a massive £15,000 and end up with happy customers. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll admit it was, it was dollars, but I think it still counts. But oh, okay. yeah, it's US dollars, yeah, it's only $15,000 now. I'm just translating now, for it? UK viewers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's only like twelve thousand pounds a day, so that's nothing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was a he's a um, in New Zealand, and he's like Kiwi, half Kiwi, half Japanese. And his specialist was his specialism was he's a wedding photographer. He specialises in pre wedding shoots, which I didn't even know was a thing before I worked for him. But apparently, these uh, these somewhat wealthy couples would fly in from Japan or Korea or whatever six months before their wedding. He was in Queenstown in New Zealand, which is like a well known like a um, what do we call it? Like an adventure type destination. Yeah, you know, yeah, you do yeah. you do all your stuff there, you go up mountains, you do all that kind of stuff. And he would fly he'd fly them in and they'd go in, go up in a helicopter, get a glass of champagne, they'd hire out um, a tux and a wedding dress, go up there and he'd take some really stunning pictures of them. Then they'd stay out for a week or whatever, then they'd go back to Tokyo and get married six months later. But now they've got all these amazing shots of them getting married up a mountain or whatever. Um, I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently it's a really big business now. And he was charging $1,500 a day, which sounds like a lot, but he's paying for a helicopter out of this. You know, he's got expenses. Um, and he was having, he was getting customers, but he was having a hard time. He felt like he was having a hard time signing them up and he wasn't getting as many leads as he wanted. And the ones he did get weren't converting that well. And the ones he did get were wanted to haggle everything and be like, oh, $1,500, can you do it for twelve? Okay, what about twelve fifty? What about $1,300? You just want to haggle everything. So I had a chat with him and said, okay, I had, first of all, I had a look at his pictures. Uh, his pictures are amazing. Like this isn't some guy, this isn't some guy like me who's got like a, you know, a DSLR camera, but just like points and clicks. Like it's like his iPhone. He knows what he's doing. Um, so this is the first thing you kind of have to get results, you know, whatever you're doing, you can't just be like someone who's kind of useless because you'll get found out, but his pictures are really, really good. Um, so when your pictures are really good and the next person is really, really good, it's a question of perception. Why would they perceive you as being the one to go to? And I said to him, well, there's something we can do here, James, but it's going to require some quite large balls on your part. You know, you're going to need some braver here. Do you want to have a go? He goes, go on then. What is it? I said, okay, how much is the most expensive person who does what you do, these pre-wedding shoots in Queenstown. He goes, well, they're about 10 grand a day. I go, okay, is there any difference between them and you? He goes, well, not really. The pictures are similar, but they've got a slightly better drone. So we can do other headshots slightly better. I go, okay. I mean, if you had the money, could you buy one of those drones? Yes. Um, and it doesn't make that much difference anyway. I said, all right then. So we will change your website, your homepage to say, I am the most expensive wedding photographer in Queenstown, New Zealand, dot, dot, dot. And there's a good reason for that. I actually wrote the page for him and uh, basically spend the rest of the page explaining why he's so expensive and why if you're looking for the absolute best, if you're looking for the premium, if you're looking for, you know, if you're flying all the way from Japan to New Zealand, you don't want to screw up your wedding shots. You know, you want the best shots. You're only coming here once. Yeah. You're only doing this once. Do you want to get it right? Or do you want some average shots? And you're like, I came all this way and I've got these kind of, you know, shots that everyone else has got. Or do you want to be able to go home and be able to say, hey, look, we're doing our wedding properly. 
Yeah. Um, so it's sort of, I call it appealing to ego as well. You're appealing oh, to the yes. ego of people coming yeah. over going, you know, I'm uh, the identity of people who, no, someone who's willing to pay money to fly all the way to Japan to get one free wedding shoot, they're not poor people. They're not people who are looking for like, you know, cheap $500. They're people who want the best. So we go for those people. I call them like the Gucci, the Valentino shoppers, the people who they want to have, the, you know, they want to be able to walk in with the bag that says Gucci or Valentino, go into like the restaurant, you know, when they've done lunch, do lunch in a fancy restaurant and plonk the bags down and say, look, I can afford this. Even during the coronavirus lockdown, I can afford this, you know. So those are the appeal to those kind of people. So what's going to happen is 99 of 100 people will land on his website and be like, most expensive, no way. But the one in 100 sees that, scrolls through, and like, this is the guy I've been looking for. This is what I want. So he doesn't get more, I don't think he gets more um, inquiries now. He probably gets about the same number of inquiries. But the inquiries he gets is like almost like 100% conversion rate. And there's no haggling on price. In fact, usually they pay more because they're like, is there a premium service? You know, um, can I get someone to meet me at the airport in a Bentley or whatever? You know, and he'll like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. But it's an extra five grand. Yeah, just stick it on the bill. We don't care. He's getting a lot of these kind of clients. He's even increased his prices since then, uh, which is just as well, because this was the start of last year. Then coronavirus hit. So he, he, had, he earned really well last year and coronavirus hit and he couldn't do anything for like yes. six months or so. So it's just mm. as well he put some money away. Uh, but now again, you no, know, he's fully booked for next year already. Um, but just, this goes to show the power of perception of these, every market has maybe 10% of people, maybe less, maybe 1%, I don't know, of these Valentino shoppers who they, their only aim is to get the absolute best. How can mm. I get the best thing? And I'm willing to spend money for it. And it's sometimes just 10Xing your price puts you in that, category yeah yeah i totally agree with you and that word perception is important the saying is mm. you know perception is truth to the perceivers and uh i think that's quite a an appropriate uh rounding up of an excellent story there you have a message that i think will resonate with so many people today who are literally stuck in life it may be their job or their money or any other obstacle so how do you help them escape what should i call it that stuckness if there is a word. I think it's, it's a word now, Malcolm. It'll, oh, it'll thank you. In, it's a, it's a good in, northern it'll, expression, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be, it'll, be in the, uh, it'll be in the Newcastle English Dictionary before yeah, long, I'm sure. A, yeah. I'm sure that's a thing. Um, well, it's a tricky one because there's so many people who are stuck in different ways. Um, like, is it the person who's in a corporate job who's, let's say, in their 40s, who's, um, they started a job when they were in the 20s and they were like, well, it's not what I want to do, but, you know, it pays the bills now. And then they got married and had kids. And before long, they were like, oh God, you know, I'm stuck here now. I've got a mortgage to pay and I can't exactly go and save the whales or, you know, um, help washed up turtles on a beach in Bora Bora or something. Because that doesn't really pay well, you know, it might be fulfilling, but it doesn't pay. I've got a house and kids to support and responsibilities. That person's different to the person who's running a business. Maybe someone like me who's happy doing what they're doing, but gets moments where they get stuck and get unstuck. Um, yeah, there's, way, there's ways out of it. Um, I've got actually got a client of mine who helps people in that first situation I talked about. Like, that's not my speciality. My speciality is helping people who have a business already do better um, rather than kind of, he calls it finding your gold where he sits down with you and basically interrogates you for an hour and pulls out all these ideas. Like he, he did this with me to find, I did this, I wanted to see what his process was like. And he came up with this stuff. We talked about music before you can see guitars in the background. And he came up with a way like I could actually teach guitar in kind of like a high ticket way, like not just be a guitar teacher, like do my Facebook personal feed. I was like, that's really clever. I almost wanted to go and start the business, but I'm like, I'm all right doing what I'm doing. But it just showed uh, someone coming in and asking those questions. There's certain things that we know how to do. Like let's say you're, even if you're only young, like 25, 30 years old, well, you've got hobbies, you've got interests that you've built up over years that you take for granted that you think's easy. Um, you know, even recently, the last year I've been learning Spanish, for example, and I wouldn't try to teach anyone Spanish now because I'm nowhere near good enough. But in the last six months, I've found ways of accelerating my ability in Spanish that the normal textbooks and classrooms and stuff won't show you. So then in future, I'm now kind of putting this away going, in future, I don't really want to teach Spanish, but there's the potential to put this into a course yeah. um, because I don't see other people teaching this. So there's ways of uh, which we may have learned stuff for ourselves, for our own benefits to go, oh, I can shortcut this and I can do it faster. Well, there may be people who are trying to learn this who were where you were 
who would pay you good money to learn that shortcut. Uh, but you possibly don't realize that you created a shortcut. You just go, oh, there's a quicker way of doing this. It might be like fixing your car. It might be like, you know, doing something in the garage, like, you know, with your tools or whatever, where you're just like, yeah, yeah, I just built this. Uh, I built this storage unit to house all the, all my stuff in the garage. Yeah, anyone can do that. But someone like me who's useless at building stuff would be like, I have no idea how to build or fix anything. I will pay you good money to learn how to do this. So I'm like, no, I'm just about at the age of 40, I used to learn how to put a picture on the wall. You know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know, as a man, I feel like I could do with being a bit more handy with that kind of stuff. I would pay someone to teach me like, uh, um, like a month long course where we teach me all the useful man skills that you need to have around the house or in general. I would pay someone good money for that. I'd probably pay them like a couple of thousand to learn this stuff. And now I've got a skill for life. But yeah. You know, someone who knows this stuff, who's grown up in a family where, you know, your dad or your granddad always knew how to do this. Your dad always knew how to do this. You just take it for granted. You assume anyone can do this. Why would anyone teach me? Why would anyone pay me to teach them how to use a drill? Yeah, but I know how to use a drill. But when I go into home base or B&Q and I'm, I'm like, I've got like an army of drills on the wall, a multitude of them. I'm like, what the hell do I buy? It's just intimidating. And I've no idea what to look at. Um there's no point asking the 17 year old working there. Cause he won't know either. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I just go home again. Well, imagine if I had someone who just taught me all this stuff. It'd be, but honestly, I feel like I want to sign up for that course now, but it doesn't exist. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm totally with you in that. We used to say that when I worked for Thompson holidays, you know, the advantage you have as a travel agent is that people are looking at a wall of brochures and a, you know, mm. a, a wadge of holidays in there. And it, they just don't know. You've got to give, give them that guidance. Take me through the typical process of how you help a new client, your workflow. Is it all online? How long does it take? How quickly can someone expect results? Um, so it depends on the client. Um, some clients I work with just one-on-one -on, -one on like a, a unique basis. But um, my program, flagship program, if you like, I call it the ecosystem. And it's all around building an ecosystem, hence the name, on your Facebook personal profile. Um, which is based around writing four different types of posts, posts that are aimed to get engagement, build your credibility. So people go, okay, Malcolm, I believe Malcolm gets results. He's not just, a, not just another person shouting hot air about how he can help you and with no evidence of it. Um, you give useful value, uh, the value that actually helps people in their lives, helps people get a result or helps people go, ah, right, that makes sense now. Malcolm's explained this in a way that I never understood before. Um, and all of that mixed together is... Basically, if you put that in front of the kind of person who needs what you've got, which basically means just befriending those people, add them as friends on Facebook, which I'll show you how to find them. Um, over time, over the course of about a month, you make one post like that. Someone goes, oh, okay, cool. But you make 10 posts like that, you know, one per day, consistently over time. It's like, you know, for want of a better expression, it's like Chinese water torture. Eventually, yeah. you know, yeah. they crack and they go, okay, I'm paying attention now. Like if I get one result for a client, people go, well, that could be a fluke. If I get 10 results for a client, they're like, okay, this guy gets results. Eventually it's like weight of numbers, pressure, whatever. Person goes, okay, yeah, I can see I've got a problem now and you're the guy to fix it. And before you know it, someone appears in your messenger inbox and goes, Malcolm, um, can we talk about your program? Or Malcolm, can you help me with my problem? Now you're having a one-on-one -on -one chat with them. I filter out the ones who um, aren't right for my program and then convert the rest. So in terms of how I show people how to do it, the first thing we do is we sit on a one-on-one -on -one call like we're doing now, Malcolm, and I would literally like, you know, interrogate you for an hour or so and ask you a bunch of questions and go, okay, and we pull out of that. This is how Malcolm is different from everyone else in his marketplace. Um, this is how Malcolm gets results. This is Malcolm's method and why Malcolm's method works. I call it the unique believable mechanism. So if I say, Malcolm, uh, I'm going to help you become spiritually enlightened in the next month, you're going to be like, that sounds pretty cool. But how? And if I just go, yeah, yeah, d don't worry about that, Malcolm, it works. You're going to be like, I'm going to need some more information that, Richard. So it's like, what's the process of taking someone from A to B that's believable that you go, okay, this is going to get in results. So that's the first thing we work on. You've then, once you've got that, you've got your foundations for essentially building your house. And then you could take those foundations and you could take it to Instagram, Pinterest, ads, whatever. You go door to door knocking with it if you want, but now you know what you're selling. But specifically after that, it's about a month of doing it on Facebook every day where eventually over time, people are going to end up in your inbox. I'll show you how to convert them. And then 
boom, you've got it. You've suddenly you've got a business um, with, for me, what is the, the least amount of friction? You're not having to create a website. You're not having to create like loads of stuff and complicated sales pages, whatever. You're doing it all on Facebook, uh, which makes it a lot easier, especially if you're fairly new to business and you're like, you're intimidated by the idea of creating loads of ads and landing pages and email sequences and all that kind of stuff. So my program is three months long, but typically you should be seeing results like a month, six weeks in. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Now, Richard, before I move to my last question, I just want to remind viewers that behind me on the screen there is your URL to pop along and, uh, and find out more about Richard and how he can help you. Richard, I'd like to give all my guests three wishes. How would you use your three wishes to help my viewers and listeners make more money without working too hard? <laughs> um, well, I would. The first wish I would give them is um, when you say three wishes, is it like, you know, I can go bing and they suddenly have a skill and they know how to do something and they can make I'm, the money, right? I'm, I'm, do, I'm being your fairy godmother. You can't go to pantomime this year, you know, you have <laughs> okay. three wishes. Okay. Wow, <laughs> this is great. I wish I had this when I was 18. But, um, yeah, um, the first one would be for people to really, it sounds like a bit cheesy in American, but really to know their own value. And I don't mean in a kind of, I don't mean in a... Uh, like, oh, I'm worth it kind of way, like I'm a good person, or but we really understand what their skills are and how it separates them from everybody else. So they go, ah, this is what I do. I think most people don't know what they do. They'll call themselves a life coach or whatever, or a fitness coach, but they don't really know what they do, which makes them a commodity. Um, then the second wish I will give them is to understand how to communicate that. And the third wish I will give them is for them to understand for them what is the best platform and the best way of doing that that works for them so again i'm not prescribing hey you have to go to facebook like i do you might you might not even want to go online you might want to do it old school and like set up a uh, a shop and have radio ads or whatever fine but we need to find something that's going to work for you that you're going to be able to stick with rather than trying to force you into a box that you don't want honestly if, it, if everybody had those three wishes um they would have a business, you know, it's not, it's not super hard. Like find a way, find, find a way of creating something that people want, find a way of getting in front of people, find a way of then, you know, converting them. That's basically it, isn't it? That's like literally business in a nutshell, but people make it so complicated and unnecessarily so. Richard Fletcher of Magic Source. Thank you for the interview. Truly really amazing and revealing. Oh, thanks for having me on Malcolm. I appreciate it. Enjoyed it.